This is Unchained CEO. I am Caleb Jones. This is where we talk about how to set up a location independent, low work, high margin, high income business that will set you free from your nine to five job and your collapsing quasi socialist, quasi authoritarian Western country. And if you want moving to a less bad country or at least setting up an international backup plan and doing all these things for very little money because none of this costs a lot of money if you do it correctly. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that has been more requested by any other topic I can remember in many, many years. I mentioned on a prior podcast that if you guys wanted me to talk about what libertarian actually means, what libertarianism actually is. I said, if I get a whole bunch of you requests, get not just a few of you, but a whole bunch of you, then I will do a whole thing on it. And my God, <laughs> did you guys request it? We got comments. We got emails. Holy crap. I got a few of you have my personal number because you've done coaching or been part of our you know live events. And I got, I got WhatsApp texts. I got, bro, okay. Message received, I'm doing it for you guys. Normally, I wouldn't talk about this or normally I wouldn't spend an entire podcast going into this, but today I'm going to do that. I'm going to describe to you exactly how this works, what it means, and why it is far better than being a left winger, either an old school left winger or a woke left winger, or being a right winger, either being a standard Republican or a hardcore, you know, traditional conservative or a Trump supporter. Libertarianism is superior to all these things, so we'll go to detail as to why. Really quick, this is a podcast. So if you prefer to listen to this auditorily as a podcast, you go to calebjones.com slash podcast. I realized some of the links were not working correctly over there. We have fixed them all. So you can go over there if you want. If you are a man and you're interested in my other content, which I don't discuss in this channel, you can go to alphamail20.com slash podcast and subscribe over there. So I do one a week here, one a week there. So two week total if you want both. Cool, cool. All right. <clears throat> um, are there any announcements before I need to? You know, there's something I will talk about halfway into this, the Paraguay thing we're doing, but I'll talk about that a little later. Cool, cool. I'm just going to get right into this. And then I will answer uh, questions. I'll take a half. We have a lot of content to discuss today, a lot of topics. A deep dive into one topic, actually, but it, it's complicated. So what I'll do is I'll take a little break in the middle. Um, quick announcement on Paraguay, and then I will answer the questions I see in the chat, and then I will finish out the rest of the presentation today. Cool? Cool. All right. Hang on one moment. <clears throat> Take a quick drink of water. Ow. Just crashed one of my tooth. My tooth with my metal cup. Mm. Hang on. Is my tooth okay? Yeah. I felt good. Awesome. One of you is asking my opinion of FDR. Big government, big government person. Don't like big government. All right. Libertarianism. So first, before I discuss what it is, I need to discuss the objections to it. So I'm going to discuss the overall objection to it first. Then at the end, I'm going to discuss specific objections people make about libertarianism or libertarians. And... Really, by the end of this, or even half of this, you'll realize that the objections kind of answer themselves. Cool? Cool. So, first, uh, as many of you know, I stopped voting in any elections about 20 years ago. And there were a number of reasons why I stopped. But the primary reason I stopped voting is I realized way back in the 90s, when I was politically active, I realized, and I was a libertarian back then, um, I realized that what most people would do it's it's something, I don't have a name for this. Sometimes I call it the four versus eight rule. But here's how this works. And many of you listening to this will do this. You will react this way when I describe what libertarianism, libertarianism is. Let's say you have a system in your life and it sucks. On a scale of one to 10, it's about a four. So it kind of works, but it sucks. Because it's a four. It's not a zero. It's not a one. It's a four. So it kind of works, but it's clearly subpar. I come to you with a different system, an alternate system to do the same thing, to get the same result that you want. And on a scale of 4 and 10, it's an 8. So it is clearly much better than a 4. It could even be a 7. 7 or an 8 
is much better than a four. And what you say to me is, yeah, that is better. Eight is better than four. But because it's not a 10, I don't want to do it. I go, huh? Yeah. You know, because it's not a 10, I'll stick with my four. That's what the vast majority of human beings do when you describe a libertarian model versus a left-wing, you know, quasi-socialist, welfare state model or a right-wing, traditional, conservative, top-down control model, things like that. They will say, yep, that is a better system. Libertarian is better. But I don't like this one thing. This one thing emotionally bothers me. So I'm going to stick with my four forever and never change. I'm just going to stick with my four, even though I admit your system is on the overall better. And I had that conversation many, 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 many times in the 90s and early 2000s when I finally said, okay, people just want to stick with the collapsing system. Left-wingers want to stick with left-wing stuff. Right-wingers want to stick with right-wing stuff. Even if they admit libertarianism is less bad, they don't want to do it because of that one little thing they're scared of, even though they admit it's better. I'll get more to this as we go along. So just be aware that a strong percentage of you are going to listen to what I have to say today and you're going to go, yeah, that is, wow, that's really good. That is better but I don't want to do it because it's one thing I don't like. So I'm going to stick with my current system of the collapsing Western civilization in which we live, where we only have two horrible choices, uh, Trump versus Biden or Trump versus Hillary or Obama versus John McCain or whatever. I'm going to, these two horrible people. And I'm just going to stick with this as the country I live in, United States, Canada, Europe gets literally worse and worse and worse and worse every year until it will collapse in my lifetime, which these countries will, as I've talked about in great detail before. One of the reasons the Western world is collapsing is because no one's willing to try something different because they're too emotionally wedded to their fours. I'm about to give you a system today that is at least an eight. It is not a 10. It is not perfect. By the way, in this conversation, I would say to you, I can't give you a 10. Tens don't exist in the real world. You don't. There's no such thing as a perfect way to govern a bunch of people. There's no such thing. There are problems with libertarianism. There are problems with left-wingism. There are problems with conservatism. There are problems, all these things. It's the number of problems, the amount of problems. Least bad. That's why I talk about here at Unchained CEO, moving to a less bad country. Why do I say that? There are no perfect countries. Just like there are no perfect governmental systems, right? Right. Every governmental system you come up with has some things you won't like. So the question is not, what is the perfect system? The question is, what is the least bad system and libertarianism keeping government as small as you can for as long as you can keeping government small local and decentralized is unquestionably we have a massive amount of data to support this history to support this the least bad way to run a society not the perfect way the least bad way cool cool all right so just be aware of this because i'm not one of these guys says libertarianism is perfect I'm not. There are a few libertarian extremists who think libertarianism is, is perfect and there's an answer for all these. No, there are some negatives of libertarianism, but they pale in comparison to the negatives of Trumpism, traditional conservatism, republicanism, left-wingism, whatever you want to call welfare statism, socialism, authoritarianism, makes blah, blah, blah. Make sense? One second. <clears throat> The word libertarian has unfortunately been destroyed. It has been co-opted by Trump supporters. So it used to mean something very specific, a libertarian, now means a guy, who, a Republican who votes for Trump. Several years ago, a bunch of right-wing Republican-ish Trump types co-opted the word libertarian, and they said, I'm a libertarian. They weren't libertarian at all. They were big government Republicans who voted for Trump. Trump, who, by the way, as I've said many times, is not only the is the biggest big government president in world history, certainly in American history. He jacked up spending and deficit spending faster than any other president ever before the pandemic started. I covered this on my blogs. So an actual libertarian would never vote for Trump and would never support Trump, no matter how bad the other option was. And what happened several years ago is a bunch of people like, you know, even people like Tucker Carlson, <clears throat> who is for government-run healthcare and all kinds of crazy, sh big government shit, call themselves libertarians. So now when people hear the word libertarian, they think, oh, Trump supporter. No, a libertarian would never vote for Trump. I didn't vote for Trump. I think Trump is one of the worst presidents in my lifetime. And that's saying something because I'm an actual libertarian. Very similar to how the left destroyed the word racist. So it's a very similar parallel. 
20, 25 years ago, if someone called you a racist, that was a big deal. That was a serious charge. You, ooh, people don't know. Today, if someone calls you a racist, do you care? No, why? Because the left for the past 15 years has called everyone a racist. Everybody's a racist, right? Everyone. I've been called a racist. My son is black and I've been called a racist. So because they call everyone a racist, the word now means nothing. So when you have all these big government Republican Trump types who call themselves libertarianisms, libertarian, excuse me, it destroys that term. So today I'm going to give you the actual term of what it actually means. That's why when I say I'm a libertarian, if you notice, I don't say I'm a libertarian. I say I'm a minarchist libertarian. And that gives you a hint that I'm not the typical Republican dumb shit who votes for Trump calling himself a libertarian. I actually am taking this seriously. I am a, quote, real libertarian. There's two kinds of libertarians. We'll cover that in a second. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, one thing about Trump really quick. People say, well, Caleb, you know, they didn't know that about Trump when they voted. How come I knew it in 2016? Trump said six different times that I counted <clears throat> in interviews and in, and in the debates, if I'm president, everyone will get government, free government health care. That is the opposite of libertarianism. And he said that before he was president. So if you voted for Trump, you knew in your heart, this guy was for big, 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 big government. And either A, you didn't care, or B, and more likely, you like big government because most human beings do. Cool? Cool. All right. Libertarianism is keeping government as small as you can for as long as you can. Every time any society has attempted this, they kept their government as tiny as possible for as long as they could. Amazing things happen. I'll give you two very easy examples. The United States, starting in 1776, was a, a few backwater farmers. That's what the U.S. started as. It went from a few backwater farmers to a world power in less than 120 years by embracing very tiny, tiny, tiny government. That has never happened before in all of human history. Go look at the history books and find another example where a teeny tiny group of backwater farmers became a literal superpower in less than 120 years. Never happened. This is what happens when you keep government as small as you can for as long as you can. The middle class explodes in a great way and wonderful things occur. Second example that I've also used many times. The country of Hong Kong back in the 1940s was a rock in the ocean. An unimportant rock with no natural resources that no one gave a shit about. It adopted, uh, it didn't do this on purpose. So America did this purposefully. Hong Kong kind of did this by accident. But Hong Kong by accident adopted a libertarian model and kept government very, very tiny, and within 40 years became the went from nothing, a useless rock with no natural resources, no one gave a shit about, to the number one economy in the world. And they did that how? By keeping government tiny as they could for as long as they could. Whenever you start making government bigger, it starts fucking up everything. It starts hurting the middle class. It starts hurting economic growth rates, it starts hurting cost of living, it starts hurting lifestyle, it starts hurting everything. When you keep government as small as you can for as long as you can, amazing things happen that can't happen any other way. So libertarianism is not, theor people say, well, it's theoretical. True, actual libertarianism is theoretical as ever been tried. But we have just two, we have those two examples plus many other where we know for a fact that countries who keep government as small as they can for as long as they can accomplish amazing things that no other country can pull off. Even today, where they do quasi-libertarianist stuff, like here in Dubai, they pull off amazing, it was a desert, and then all of a sudden, all this money floods into the country and things like that when they adopt small government models. Now, liber now Dubai is not a libertarian country. I use that as an example. I gave you two examples that were more libertarian-ish. Whereas the United States, the first 120 years, or Hong Kong part of the 90s, 100% libertarian? No, but it shows you what happens when you keep government as small as you can for as long as you can. It's fucking awesome. Better than having a welfare state. Better than having a big dad government saying, no, 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 you can't do drugs. That's wrong. Better than all those things. Cool? Cool. All right. Two philosophies around libertarianism. I'm going to start with the philosophies first, then I'll get into the particulars about how this works. Okay? <clears throat> the first philosophy is one I've talked about a lot called natural law. 
by the way, these are philosophies. These are not facts. You can't prove or disprove a philosophy. It's a philosophy like stoicism, okay? Natural law is the philosophy that you own 100% of you. I've talked about this in my books. I've talked about this in my blogs. It's a, it's a philosophy I've followed my whole life, most of my life. You own 100% of you. No one owns even a percentage of you. It's not like you own 60% of you and other people own 40% of you. Or like, do I own 40% of your body? No, you own 100% of your body. If I own 40% of your body, what's that called? It's called slavery. Because then I would own 100% of everything you make with your body. I own, I own 40% of your body. Left-wingers and right-wingers don't believe this. They believe that, well, yeah, you kind of own you, but society, quote, society, what they call, quote, society, they really mean government, also kind of owns you because, you know, you use the roads and you cough on people. And so we kind of, so no, you don't own 100% of yourself. Natural law says you own you 100% of you. Now, if you own 100% of your body, which you do, that means you have every right to put any drug in your body you want because you own you. No one has any, as long as you're 18 or over, let's, let's cover that. As long as you're an adult, okay? If you're an adult, <laughs> you can put anything you want in your body. You can even kill yourself. You own your body. That's your business, not my business, not anyone else's business. It also means that anything you, do, you make with your body is 100% yours. It's not half yours. It's 100% yours. So if you do work, you do manual labor, let's say, for eight hours, and I pay you $100, you, someone else can't come say, well, I, $40, that is mine, because I own 40% of you. No, it's 100% yours. Now, a left would say, wait a minute, you use the commons, use roads and police, and I'll cover that in a second. Yes, you have to pay for those services, correct. We'll cover how to do that in a minute. But that's what natural law means, okay? You follow this law, you're going to be a much happier person. This also falls right in line with my other topic, my other brand, which I won't talk about today, natural law. You own 100% of you, everyone else owns 100% of them. You don't own any percentage of anyone else, and no one owns you. So no one can tell you what to do. Okay? Second philosophy is the non-aggression principle. This means that you cannot initiate force ever for any reason. Initiate force. Now, you can defend yourself. If you come up to me and you punch me, I can defend myself and punch you back. That's okay. I'm defending myself. If you break into my house, many laws say I can fucking shoot you in the head. I can kill you if you break into my house because you're threatening me. It's my property. That's different. That's okay. You can engage in self-defense. You cannot initiate force. So if you're minding your own business, I can't go over to you and punch you, attack you, steal your wallet. It also applies to your property, which we'll cover later. I can't walk up and smash the windows in your car. I can't do. I can't initiate force, and no one can initiate force against you, including organizations and including governments. This also applies to countries. To countries, a country cannot attack another country. Putin with Ukraine, America with Iraq and Afghanistan. You can't just preemptively attack a country. Now, if a country attacks you, you can defend yourself. Hell to the yes. But you cannot preemptively attack a country because they might attack you someday. That's against the non-aggression principle. All right? So we're going to come back to those two things in a minute. That kind of overrides everything we're going to talk about. Those are the two principles under which libertarianism works. You own 100% of you. And no one has the right to aggress against you, and you don't have the right to aggress against anyone else, initiating force. Make sense? Real simple. Okay. Next thing. There are two types of libertarians, and they are different. They're similar, but they are different. And the world, especially left-wingers, tends to lump libertarians into one of these two types. <laughs> Libertarianism does not mean no government. Most libertarians are what I am. They are what's called minarchists. That means you do have a government. It's just really tiny. Specifically, it is small, local, and decentralized, which we'll cover a little bit in a minute. So a minarchist like me believes, yes, if you want to have a small government that manages your town or your city and does things like roads and cops and basic services like that, and that's it, that's fine. It doesn't do anything else. And you keep it small as you can for as long as you can, decentralized, small lo and local. Okay, we'll talk about that, how that works in a minute. 
There's another type of libertarian who I really like, but I'm not one of them. I am kind of, I'll discuss that in a second, called anarchists. Now, they don't use the word anarchist because just like Trump supporters destroyed the word libertarian, <laughs> the left has destroyed the word anarchist. So today when you say anarchist, you visualize a raging Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter left winger throwing Molotov cocktails and blowing up buildings. That's what you visualize. Most people have this word because the left co-opted the word anarchist the same way the Trump right co-opted the word libertarian. That's not an anarchist. That's something very different. They call themselves anarchists, but not. So the term these guys use, or an accurate term, is anarcho-capitalists. They shorten it and they call themselves ANCAPs. So there's minarchists and anarcho-capitalists. An anarcho-capitalist says you should have no government at all. Capitalism and corporations and small businesses run everything. There's literally no government. Most libertarians are not ANCAPs. Most libertarians are like me. They believe in small government that does exist for roads. So the reason it's important for you to understand this is that very often, left-wingers in particular, but some right-wingers do, you say the word libertarian and they go, you know, that's so stupid. We need roads. That's the big thing. Well, we need roads. I've done entire articles about, well, we need roads. Yes. Dumb fuck. That's anarcho-capitalists. That's not minarchists. I believe in having government-owned roads within a given town or city. Fine. That's okay. I don't believe in no roads. Most libertarians believe in roads owned by a government. Anarcho-capitalists have their own concepts I'll cover in a second, okay, briefly. So whenever someone says you need roads, they are full of shit. They understand that there are minarchists and anarcho-capitalists, and there's a difference in that most libertarians do believe in roads. It's a way of just blowing off libertarians, okay? So that's a bullshit excuse. Why am I not an anarcho-capitalist? There's a few of you that are. I've gotten this question on my blog. Well, Caleb, aren't you an anarcho-capitalist? Here's the weird thing about this. I am in my heart. In my heart, not my brain, not my mind, but in my heart, I am an anarcho-capitalist. In a perfect utopian world, there would be no government. Doug Casey has talked about there should be 7 billion countries because each person should be their own country. There should be no countries, no governments. In a perfect world, which human beings don't have, I agree. So in my heart, I am an anarcho-capitalist. And my goal is to get as close to that as possible. However, the reason I'm not an anarcho-capitalist is Two main reasons, a big one and a minor one. The biggest one is, and I mentioned this before, if you waved a magic wand and removed all the governments from planet Earth tomorrow morning, guess what would happen? The very next morning, 8 a.m. the next day, human beings would start forming governments again. Unfortunately, human beings like governments. Human beings are communal creatures. They're top-down creatures. That's how it fucking works. I don't like it. I kind of hate it that they like it, but they do. And as always, you look at the world the way it is, not the way you wish it was. And if I look at the world the way it is, I have to look at the world and say, okay, clearly human beings love governments. So then I back down one level away from being an anarcho-capitalist. I say, all right, fine, you morons. If you have to have a government, fine, have your little government. Keep it small as you can for as long as you can. Local and decentralized. Then we're good. Fine. So that's why in my heart, I'm an ANCAP, but in my mind in real life, I am a minarchist libertarian because it can actually kind of work. I just gave you two examples, the United States and Hong Kong, and other little examples I could give you where they weren't 100% libertarian, but they were very close to minarchist libertarian societies and amazing things happened. Second lesser reason, that's the biggest reason I'm not an ANCAP. The second lesser reason is, unfortunately, and I love anarcho-capitalists, again, I'm one in my heart, most of these anarcho-capitalists do not do a very good job in explaining their views. If you guys know who Sam Cedar is, he is a big left-wing podcaster, and he has a regular series where he has liber quote-unquote libertarians call in. They're actually anarcho-capitalists who believe in no government, and he debates them, and he makes them look really stupid when he says, okay, how would you have a road? Go ahead and explain it. What happens if someone comes and blows up my house? How would that work if there's no government? And I hate to say this, a lot of those anarcho-capitalists say a lot of stupid shit and they end up looking really dumb because they really haven't, either they haven't thought through their processes or they don't know how to explain it, either one. Whereas a minarchist libertarian, I can debate anybody. No fucking problem. 
because I do believe in government as long as it's small, local, and decentralized, which wipes out all people's like Sam Cedar's questions. Because I do believe in having a government. Cool? Cool. Okay. Um, so now we need to compare libertarians to left-wingers and right-wingers. So a libertarian believes in no coercion. What does coercion mean? Coercion means forcing you, using force, initiating force against you to make you do something. Now, we can't do that as libertarians in a libertarian society because natural law, I don't own you, and non-aggression principle, I can't, I can't initiate force against you. Make sense? I can't do that. So. Is that what left-wingers think? <laughs> no. So left-wingers, historically, today left-wingers are even worse, but historically, a typical left-winger, like a Bill Maher classic left-winger, would say, in terms of social matters, like marriage, gambling, porn, sex, your personal life, no government. Keep government out. Be free. We, we left-wingers believe in freedom. We don't want government telling us what to do in our bedrooms, right? And then, but when you go to financial matters, fiscal matters, business, taxes, things like that, oh, they want all kinds of government controls. When you start a business in a left-wing society, government comes right in, and this is how it works in most Western countries, all Western countries actually, comes right in and starts telling you how to run your business, how you will pay your employees, how you run your, how you will fire your employees, human resources, taxes. They will regulate the fuck out of you. And left-wingers love it. They love to use government force against you in terms of your finances and your business. But historically, they would leave you alone in your personal life. Now, today, left-wingers have become authoritarian. And now they want government cracking down on your personal life as well, right? You know, microaggressions, and there's 47 genders, and if you don't say certain things, you get thrown in jail, and you can't say... That's all personal shit. So now left-wingers are authoritarians both in the social area and in the fiscal area, great. Now, let's switch to right-wingers. Right-wingers, historically, today they are even worse, but historically, right-wingers were the exact opposite of what I just described. So what they would say is, in my financial life, with my money and my taxes and my business, no government, leave me alone. Let the free market work, the, the invisible hand of the free market, right, all that stuff. Leave me alone, no government or zero government. Let businesses do whatever the fuck they want. Awesome, right? Now, but then, historically, they would go to your personal life and say, oh, no, 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 no. You can't snort cocaine. No, 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 no. The cops are going to come into your house and take and bust in and steal your car and make sure you're not snorting cocaine because you can't do drugs. You can't gamble. You can't watch porn. Excuse me. We have to have standards in society, and we are a Christian society, and we need to make sure government, so they go full authoritarian when it comes to your personal life, at least historically. So they were the opposite left wingers. Now today, just like the left, the right is now authoritarian on both sides. I mean, I have talked about, especially when Trump became a thing, all the comments I started getting on my blogs from Trump supporters that were just authoritarian as fuck. We should just restrict people from doing this and the government just crack down on these people. I'm like, you guys are Republicans. You're supposed to be, You got, why did you suddenly become authoritarian? Just last week, I saw a right-wing uh, podcast, Andrew Claven. Those of you who know who that is, I think he works at Daily Wire at Ben Shapiro. He was interviewing um, Ann Coulter, I forget. And he said it, he goes, you know, my concern, this is a right-wing conservative Republican dude. My concern is when I talk to young right-wingers, young Trump, it's all, I get all this authoritarian shit. Yes, both the left and the right have moved to the authoritarian side of the scale. They become even less libertarian than before. So as you compare libertarians to left and right, libertarians believe no government in your personal life, no or tiny, no or tiny government in your financial and business life. We leave you the fuck alone. Because you own you, and we can't aggress against you. Now, if you aggress against someone, if you go stab someone, you fucking go to jail. We can respond to force. We can initiate force. I'll give you some specific examples in a minute where you'll go, oh, shit, you're right. This is much better. Um, let's see. What is the government's role then? If you're a minarchist libertarian, what does the government do? 
Well, the government's role only has, in, in a libertarian, minarchist, libertarian society, government has one job. Now, in a left-wing society, government has about a thousand different jobs. It has to make sure that you give people free health care. It has to make sure there's, we give money to poor people. It has to make sure we give illegal immigrants all this money. It has to make sure that people don't say bad things on Twitter. It has to be, There's 10,000 things if you're a left-wing you want government to do. It has 10,000 jobs. If you're a modern-day right-winger, it's not 10,000, it's about 7,000. About 7,000, we got to make sure we build a wall. We got to invade these countries and stay there forever in case they attack us. Right? Okay. Libertarian, government has one job. One job. What is that? To protect you against force. And that's it. That's it. That's the only rule of government. So, in a small libertarian society with small government, you would have roads, you would have police, you would have a court system, you would have an army that defends the borders, a navy to defend your seas. The army would stay inside the country and defend the borders. It would not go attack 14 different countries like the United States has, do, has done, not 14, uh, six, seven, eight countries like the United States does under Bush, Obama, Trump, Biden. Okay, it does have an army. It could even have nuclear weapons, but it keeps them home. It doesn't bother anyone unless you're invaded. So yes, you would have these functionality functions, functionality functions, in a libertarian society. Does that make sense? Um, what was I going to say about that? Something else is, uh, let's see. Protect citizens by force. There was something on my notes. I, let me think a minute. Maybe it'll come back to me. There's something else I'm going to say about this. Um, damn, it was really good too. Shit. What was I going to say? Hey, I'm going to take a drink. See if that'll drop my memory. Can't think of it. All right. Next piece of libertarianism is since you own 100% of you, in a libertarian society, you have 100% rock solid property rights. Core. In most countries of the world, if you buy a house, that government can seize that house for any fucking reason they want, and they will, and they can. In many countries, including Western countries, if they want your money, they go into your bank account and they pull out your money. It happened in Ireland. It happened in Poland. It happened in Cyprus. It will happen in Canada and it will happen in the United States because they don't have a hundred. Now they have stronger property rights than most countries. Certainly if you, if you start a business or buy a house somewhere in Africa, mm, you have a lot of property rights down there. Not really. Whereas in Dubai, one of the reasons Dubai has really taken off is they respect 100% property rights. If you buy something here in Dubai, it's yours. And the government says, this is yours. We're not going to touch it. It's yours. Is that true in Africa? No. Is that true in other parts of the Middle East? No. Is it true in Europe, Western and European, you know, Eastern and Western Europe? No. It's not as bad. But there are, even the United States, they have things called imminent domain. If the government wants to put a freeway right through your house, the government will kick you out of your house and you have nothing to do. If the government thinks you're dealing drugs, it will come in even without a warrant, not without a warrant, without a, um, without you being convicted of a crime. It will seize your car, seize your house. Not cool. In a libertarian society, no one can take your property from you ever unless in rare circumstances you are convicted of a crime. You've gone through the entire court proceeding, the court process, because again, in a minarchist libertarian society, you would have courts. Make sense? You have to have 100% rock solid property rights because you own 100% of you and anything you create or earn is an extension of you. Therefore, I can't aggress against you. And again, not aggression. I can't come in and take your house or take your money or take your kids or take your car. That also applies to things like websites. If it's your website, I can't take it down. I can't. It's yours. It's your property. 100% property rights. Cool? Cool. Um, I have a lot more to talk about really quick. Really quick. Quick pause. CalebJones.com slash events. Our Paraguay Get Residency is our number one most popular Get Residency program. And it's available now, but only for like the next, the deadline is the end of this month. So you get like eight, nine days to sign up for this. I will be there. Billy will be there. You can also, if you don't want to get residency in Paraguay, but you want to hang out with us in Paraguay with all the other events, there's a Get to Know Paraguay service. And I'm doing two different masterminds in Paraguay because I'm going to be there for three months. 
This is all going to be in July, mostly in the July, a little bit in September. So if you want in on this, there's a whole bunch of other events, calebjones.com slash events, and they're all there, but there's a hard deadline in the Paraguay one because unlike other residencies, you have to file a lot of paperwork through your own corrupt, slow Western authoritarian government, which could sometimes take weeks. And so if we let you in after the deadline, and this has happened, we let you in after the deadline, you may not have your docs ready by the time you need to go down, then you can't get residency. You're going to come back. And that's happened. So it's a hard deadline. If you want in on this, figure out your logistics now. I'm giving you three, four months in advance warning. It's July. You've got plenty of time. It's only March I'm saying this. CalebJones.com slash events, plus those the, all the other events we have for this year. Stuff in Phoenix, stuff in Dubai, stuff in Atlanta, stuff in Mexico, including Cancun, Paraguay, doing all kinds of stuff. It's all there. So, but I'm saying if you want your residency in Paraguay, which is zero tax because you're location dependent, territorial tax country, one of the safest, most solid countries in the world, one of the most lowest cost countries in the world, one of the best residencies in the world, you want in on this, we're not doing it that, that get residency event until again next year. You will miss out. You gotta wait another year. Now you can also get the, that's the platinum service. You get the signature service where you go in and do it, your, not do it yourself. You go down whenever you want, but we don't go down with you. We still do all the work for you, but we don't go with you. You want to come with us with the group. We're going to have a big group this year, Billy, myself, and a bunch of other people. You've got like eight, nine days to sign up for this thing. And you can sign up and you can, have a, you'll, you can schedule a phone call with Billy. She'll answer all your questions. I'm just giving you, as always, at the end of this, I have guys saying, oh, I didn't know about the deadline. Can I? No, you can't sign up. It's past the deadline. I'm sorry. So calebjones.com slash events. If you have any interest in joining us in Paraguay in July of this year, which, by the way, is the best time to go to Paraguay. That's why I'll be there in July, August, and September. I'm doing a London event in June. You guys in Europe, I can hang out with you guys in uh, June. I'll be in London. I'll be in the UK for most of the month of June. I'm doing two events in London. CalebJones.com slash events. Cool? Cool. All right. Moving on. I see a lot of good questions. I will get to your questions in a minute. Um... Yeah, I'll get, I'll be finish this stuff and I'll get to your questions. You guys got a lot of good questions. All right, moving on, libertarianism. Small, local, and decentralized. That's how you keep your government. When you go the opposite of any of those things, when you make government big, that's when all the problems start. When you make it centralized in one central location that doesn't give a shit about you, that's when all the problems start. When you make it far away, that's when all the problems start. When government is small, local, and decentralized, the most powerful person in terms of your government is the mayor of your town. And unlike the president or a senator or a governor, you can walk into the mayor's office and yell at him if he's doing a bad job. You can much more easily remove a bad mayor than you could ever remove a bad president, right? Right. So you have a lot of control over how it works when it's small, local, and decentralized. Also, if you live in, let's pick a city. Let's pick a city on the East Coast. Um, Atlanta, Georgia, okay? If you live in Atlanta, Georgia, you have every right through elections. I'm not big on democracy, but that's a conversation another time. You have every right to determine through elections how you want Atlanta, Georgia managed because you live there and you're dealing with the people you live with, you live around, right? You have no right to tell Seattle how to live. Fuck you. That's Seattle's business. If you want to tell Seattle how to live, then go move to Seattle, live there, and then vote in those elections. So you have no right to enact any laws on any cities outside of you. That's why I say local. By the way, that's the way the United States used to work a long, long time ago before any of us were been born, several hundred years ago. The way it worked is every city, every neighborhood, and every state, which is almost like its own country, did whatever they wanted. They had a federal government that did very little. They did a few things. It was small. And everybody was happy. Now we have a system where the federal government runs the entire country. And so if a left-winger gets into office, half the country is furious. If a right-winger gets into office, half the country is furious. Therefore, half the country is always fucking furious. Before that, everyone was happy. That's what happens when you make it centralized. If you make government decentralized, you move to wherever you want, and then everybody's happy. You see this works? It's nice. I'm not saying no government. Keep it small, local, and decentralized, and now you're good. 
Um, let's see. What else do I want to say about that? I'm missing some things in my notes. I have a lot of good points I was going to make. I keep forgetting. Um, damn it. Oh, well. Now, let's take some examples of how the left views certain issues, how the right views certain issues, and how libertarian views the issues. And you're going to see this in stark contrast to why libertarianism is the least bad among left and right. Not perfect, but least bad. Instead of a four, it's an eight, but it's not a 10. 10 doesn't exist, all right? Random, law, random issues. Legalization of marijuana as a random issue. Legalization of weed, okay? What is the right-wing view of legalization of weed? The traditional right-wing view. Yeah. Don't do it. You can't do it. It's a drug. It's bad. We have to make sure that cops make sure that you don't smoke any weed because drugs are bad. Now, what's the problem with that? If you are home on your couch and you smoke a joint, who are you aggressing against? Yeah, nobody. You're not hurting anyone, right? Are you violating anyone outside of your body? No, it's your body. So as I said, you own 100% of you. You can smoke it up and put whatever chemicals you want in your body because it's your body. So therefore, the government has no right to tell you what you can or can't put in your body, assuming you're an adult. We're not talking about little kids. Different story for little kids. If you're 18 or over, or whatever the age of adulthood is in your region, when conservatives say you can't snort cocaine, that's bad, drugs are bad. Fuck you. If someone wants to snort cocaine, let them do whatever the fuck they want. It's their body. That's the right-wing view on drugs. Now, as I've talked about, the right becomes more left-wing every year as the Overton window moves to the left. So 20 years ago, left -wing, excuse me, right-wingers were absolutely against marijuana legalization. Today, most right-wingers think it's perfectly fine because the right has become more left. Same thing with gay marriage. 25 years ago, if you said gay marriage, the typical average right-winger, would the head would explode. Now they're like, oh, that's fine because the right has become more left. Right? Okay. Marijuana. What is the left-wing view on marijuana? This is a trick question. I want you to answer in your own head. You can put the chat if you want, but answer in your own head right now. What is the left-wing view on marijuana? Now, probably what you're said is make it legal. Is that the left-wing view on marijuana? Make it legal? Really? So left-wing says put it at the grocery store and anyone can buy it? No. That is not the left-wing view on marijuana. Remember, left-wingers love big government. So they just want to make it legal? Can you go to any left-wing place in the United States and just go to 7-Eleven and just buy it? No. What is the actual left-wing view on marijuana? Here it is. You can sell it to people, but you can only sell it in a government-approved facility called a dispensary that is heavily regulated by the government. And we regulate the fuck out of it, and we tax the shit out of it. Then you can sell it. That's the left-wing view. So left-wing view is just make it legal. No. The left-wing view is regulate the shit out of it, put a bunch of bureaucracy around it, put a, bunch of, put a bunch of government procedures and controls and bullshit around it, and jack up the taxes on it so we can make more money for big government because we got to give more money to you know the, all the illegal aliens coming in here. That's the left-wing view. What is the libertarian view? Make it legal. That's it. So in a libertarian country, you could buy weed at your 7-Eleven grocery store, you just buy it like any other piece of food. No extra regulations, no nothing. Do you see the difference? Now, taxes. What's the, uh, what's the left-wing view on taxes? As high as you can make it, right? And the more money you make, the higher the taxes should go. Most left-wingers want rich people, quote, rich people to make, to pay like 70, 80% taxes, income taxes, or more. As high as you fucking can. That's obvious. Left-wingers love their taxes, right? Right. What is the left-wing view? Excuse me. What is the right-wing view on taxes? Now, I'll, this is another trick question. What's the right-wing view on taxes? And answer in your own head. What's the right-wing view of taxes? Now, the odds are you said they want low taxes. Is that what right-wingers want? Low taxes? Really? So when Republicans control the government, in the United States, or the non-American equivalent, the taxes are low? What are the taxes right in the United States? What have I talked about many times? The average American pays what? 
51 to 70 percent in total tax in total tax burden on taxes he sees and taxes he doesn't see. Is that low? What's another? Let's forget about that. What's another right wing country? Uh, Singapore is a right wing conservative country. Singapore have low taxes. You start a business in Singapore right now, you're going to pay a 17 percent flat corporate tax. Then after that, you're going to pay a, a personal tax anywhere around mm, 20-ish percent, 15 to 20 percent, as high as 22 percent. So 20 percent plus 17 percent is 37 percent. That's almost 40 percent of your income. Is that low? No. It's lower than the left-wingers. Yes. Is it low? No. Right-wingers want high taxes, just not as high as the left. George W. Bush, famously in his speech, said, no American should ever have to pay more than one-third of his income in taxes. 33%? Fuck you. No, that's not low. That's horrific. That, that's insanity. So right-wingers want high taxes. Left-wingers want even higher taxes. What do libertarians want? zero or as close to zero as possible. Now, if you're an ANCAP, you want literally zero. If you're a minarchist libertarian, you want what Dubai is doing. Dubai has zero taxes, no income taxes, no property taxes, no payroll taxes, no tax. You get paid in Dubai, you can take 100% money, put it in your pocket, but there's a 5% VAT. There's a 5% sales tax. Okay, fine. One of the many reasons I moved to Dubai is they have a libertarian tax model. That's Low zero as compared to the 30 to 40 percent of the right or the 70 percent of the left. A little better, isn't it? Just a little bit better. All right, gun laws. Let's talk about gun control, gun laws. What's the left wing view on gun laws? What's <laughs> right? Make them illegal. Guns are bad. No guns, none. Now, I talk about in my upcoming book, my revised book. The left are gonna say, Oh, I don't want to take your guns away, but then you talk to them and say, Yeah, I do want to take your guns away. Left-wingers hate guns. Have you ever been in a room where someone pulls out a pistol and a room full of left-wingers, they all scream, ah, get away from me, I'm scared. Okay, left-wingers hate guns. Europeans hate guns. No, guns should be illegal because you might shoot somebody. If you own a gun, who have you aggressed against? Nobody. So it should be legal to own any kind of gun you want. I'm getting ahead of myself. That's a libertarian view. What's the right-wing view on guns? What's the right-wing view on guns? Now, again, you probably said, all guns should be legal. Is that the right-wing view? No. Now, right-wings are much better than libertarian, than, excuse me, than, than left-wingers on the gun thing. They're much, much better. Does that mean right-wingers want no gun control? No, they want all, they want common sense gun control, common sense gun laws, right? Even a right-winger will say, you can't have a 50 caliber machine gun in your backyard. Not, why do you need that? Again, if you own a 50 caliber machine gun in your backyard and you shoot trees that, that are on your property, who are you aggressing against? Nobody. So you should be allowed to own that. Now, if you shoot someone, now we throw the book at you, motherfucker. Now you're in big trouble. You don't do it. You're fine. The libertarian system punish you, punishes you, punishes you, can't talk. Libertarian systems punish you after you commit a crime. The left, and especially the right, like to punish you before you've ever done anything wrong. You have to wear your seatbelt because you might get in a car accident. Fuck you. I haven't done anything wrong. Okay. What's the libertarian view on guns? No gun laws. Buy whatever you want. You better not shoot anybody. You shoot someone, you got a problem. Now we're going to throw the book at you. You're going to throw your ass in jail. You're going to be in big trouble. Other than that, no. No laws. Okay. Um, welfare. I'll do one more. Welfare. Uh, helping poor people. <laughs> Oh, is this a big one? What is the view on welfare? What's the left-wing view? The left-wing view is charge everyone as much taxes as they possibly can charge you, redistribute that to anyone they view as whoever needs it, even if they're illegal aliens who cross the border illegally, even if they are American citizens, I'm using American examples now, if you're not American, use non-American examples, even if they're an American citizen who hasn't bothered to work in 10 years, he sits on his couch all day long because he doesn't want to work. Well, we need to help him and give him all the money he wants. You can now, in the United States, it's as bad as what Europe has always been. You can earn the equivalent of 50000 no, no, there was $45,000 a year 
through just free government shit because of the left-wing view on welfare. I have personally known people who had no job and hadn't had a job for years, and they live in a decent apartment. If they have kids, they have an Xbox. They got a, they have air conditioning. They got a cool TV. They have plenty of food. They don't own a car, which is a problem. They own, they get all the clothes they want. They go out to eat. They're completely unemployed. All this funded by you, the taxpayer. What's the right wing view on welfare? Now, again, if you're a lefter, you'll say they don't want to give money to anybody. Is that true? No. Right wingers do want some welfare, just like with taxes, not as much, but they do want some. The joke I've made with Trump supporters is that mo these are modern day right wingers. Now, 30 years ago, the right when the right wasn't insane, they weren't like this. In the 90s, 80s, 70s, you could have these conversations with right wingers, and they were great. Today, they've lost their minds. So the modern day right winger, in terms of welfare spending, if they see an illegal alien from Mexico get a bunch of free welfare from the government, modern day Trumpers lose their fucking mind. Oh, why are they doing that? They're wasting my life. They're wasting my money. Fuck off. Right? But if they see a guy, a white American who's a Christian get a bunch of free shit, well, that's perfectly fine. Healthcare is expensive. Of course, we should help them out. You're a socialist. <laughs> you call yourself a Trump supporter. You're actually a quasi-socialist. Okay? Now, let me explain something about how this works in terms of aggressing against other people. Let's say this is where you're going to agree with me, no matter what your viewpoints are. And I'll circle back to this in a minute. Let's say I broke into your house with a shotgun. I broke into your house, your apartment. I kicked the door down, went over to you, knocked you on the floor, put the shotgun to your face. And I said, give me a, open your wallet up right now. Give me cash. Yeah, okay. Give me your wallet. Give me $100 cash out of your wallet right now. But why? Because I need to help these poor people down the street. Would you like that? Would you say, oh, that's a good idea. Here's, here's 100 bucks for those poor people. You'd be like, no, get the fuck out of my house. Right? That is aggression. That's coercion. That's using force against you when you've done nothing wrong. This is why left-wingers are authoritarians. Let me switch it around. I bust into your house. I knock you on the floor. I put a shock under your face. I say, give me $100 out of your wallet. I need to build a library. You know, you're, We don't have a library. We need a library for the kids here. We just say, oh, well, now that you build a library, here's my 100 bucks. You'd say, fuck you. Doesn't matter, does it? Now, let me, let me drop the atom bomb on your ass. You Trumpers. I break into your house. I knock down the door. I kick you down on the floor. I take a shotgun. I put it to your head. I say, give me $100 out of your wallet right now. I'm going to shoot you in the leg if you don't. Why? We need to build a wall. There's too many Mexicans coming in here. Would you say, oh, well, now that you're building a wall, take my money? No, you'd be fucking furious. How dare you? Fuck off. Get the fuck out of my house. You need to go to jail. Right? Right. So using government force to take money away from you even if it's a cause you believe in, is wrong. And no one should ever do it to you. Even, I'm going to say this again. I just gave you, if you're a left winger, you agree with helping poor people. If you're a right winger, Trump, or you agree with building the wall. Even if you agree with what you think I'm going to use the money for. Assuming I'm going to use the money for that. Now, in the real world, I would take $100 from you. I would take $60 and spend it on hookers and blow. And the other 40 bucks that would go to the thing I said it would go to. But even if you thought you knew for sure the 100% of the 100 bucks would go to that thing, would that make it okay? No. What I could do is say, I could knock on your door and you answer and say, hey, I'm trying to collect money for some poor people down the street. I would really appreciate, we really appreciate you giving me like 50 bucks. Could you do that, please? Or we really want to build a wall because too many Mexicans are coming in here. Could you please give us 50 bucks? And then you have the right to say yes or no. That's how it works in a free society. But in your society, you fuckers vote for Democrats and Republicans because, well, they're the only two choices we have. <laughs> you live in a society where everyone aggresses against you. And no wonder your country is collapsing and you're pissed off all the time. Make sense? You see this works? Okay. I'm going to now cover the arguments against libertarianism, and I'll get to your questions. Here are the most common ones. First of all, we need roads. I covered that one at the very beginning. If you missed that part, Watch the replay if you're live, okay? I, I covered that one. Minarchist libertarians believe in roads. Anarcho-capitalists don't. They have other models, which I don't necessarily agree with or don't, but 
That's a bullshit excuse. Next one. Libertarianism causes more wealth inequality. So if no, there's, if the government doesn't regulate people, you have all these starving poor people and these super rich people at the top. Uh, you mean what you have now? That's the system you have now. You have the opposite of libertarian system. Your United States, the United States is just one example. The United States government spends nine trillion dollars a year. If you had a federal, local, and state spending, and we have the worst wealth inequality we've ever seen, when the government is massive. You will not have anywhere near that level of wealth inequality under a libertarian system. Would you have some inequality? Yes. However, and I'm not the first person to bring this up. I think Ben Shapiro's made this point. Income or wealth inequality is, is a useless topic. If, if you lived in a society where every adult over the age of 18 made $200,000 US a year, everyone's making 200000 or more, but there's like four or five multi-trillionaires do you care? Do you really give a shit? Does that really make you fucking mad? No. What you care about is when you have wealth inequality and there's a whole bunch of people like the United States, Canada, Europe, Western Europe in particular, who can't even buy a house. They're so poor and real estate's so expensive they can't do it. That's the problem. The problem is not wealth inequality. The problem is a horrible, depressed, collapsing middle class. When you say wealth inequality, really mean middle class. Wealth inequality is okay as long as the people at the bottom are doing fine. And that's what you have in our libertarian system. Look at the United States, the first 120 years. Look at Hong Kong prior to the 1990s. Look at places like Dubai today. Strong, thriving, middle class with minimal wealth inequality when the government was small, local, and decentralized. Not a thing. Okay? Next one. Uh, it creates pollution. It damages the environment. If you're libertarian, if you have a libertarian model, you will damage the environment. Okay. So, you know, you know, you'll live near, you'll have a house on the river and someone up the river will dump a bunch of toxic waste. Well, then what happens? He just gets away with it. Wrong. Go back to non-aggression principle and natural law. So let's take that example. You own a house on a river and your kids swim in it. I live upstream for you and I dump a bunch of toxic waste in the river. Now I make your kids sick. They're in the hospital. They're dying, okay? Then your property values drop because now you got toxic waste in your property. What can you do? You can sue me. What did I say they're part of the government and libertarian? Courts. So you take me to court, and in a libertarian model where government is small, local, and decentralized, it's easy to go to court. Right now, it's a fucking nightmare from hell to go to court. It's impossible. It'd be super easy under a model with small, tiny government. You take me to court, you say, my kids are now sick. Here's the doctors that are saying they're sick because of the toxic waste he put in the water. My house used to be worth $500,000. Now it's worth $100,000 because of the toxic waste. This guy owes me a million dollars in doctor's fees, blah, 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 blah. And then I would lose. What about the air? If I'm walking around minding my own business and now I'm coughing up a lung because you have a factory and you're polluting my air, you're aggressing against me. I can now take action against you. Lot Talk about a class action lawsuit. You can sue each other to maintain that level of environmental quality. Something else about environmental quality. Environmental quality is based on the individual city. So if you're in Los Angeles, you have every right to pass whatever laws you want in Los Angeles to clear the water and the air in Los Angeles, which, by the way, Los Angeles did about 20 years ago. You know, Los Angeles was beautiful like in the 60s and early 70s. Then it got smoggy and disgusting. Then they passed a bunch of regulations around late 90s, 2000s, and they actually cleaned up the air. It was nice. Now, what did I say about that, though? Can Los Angeles make laws to tell New York what to do with their environment? No. Fuck off. That's New York's problem. Can the United States tell Russia what to do with their environment? No. This is the thing about environmentalism. This is where left fingers are insane. Well, you know, we need to make sure that we save the environment. If you, re you can recycle all you want, China, Russia, India are going to do whatever the fuck they want the environment, and they don't give a shit about what you do in the United States or Western Europe. These Kyoto Accords, and all, they just laugh at this shit. Okay, what are you going to do, invade them? No, then you're fucked. So that's how it works with environmentalism. So if you are directly affected by someone fucking up your environment, your drinking water, your land, your air you breathe, you can take action. And it's a lot easier under a libertarian model. Okay? Um, last thing. And then I will get your questions. A lot of good questions. You guys are going crazy with the questions, as I knew you probably would. The reason I didn't want to talk about this is I don't want you to expect anyone to adopt this model. People hate 
freedom. Modern day human beings, including right wingers, Trump supporters, trad cons, the, a lot of people you like or are a part of, hate freedom. They can't stand freedom. They're not going to embrace this model. There's a reason why the Libertarian Party gets about 1% of the United States vote and 0% every other country. No one's going to adopt this model. So don't plan on this saving anyone. It ain't going to happen. Your best possible hope, and this is not even a good hope, but I've mentioned this, when the United States and Canada and Europe collapses, hopefully it will balkanize and turn into a bunch of little countries, and some of those little countries will go the way of Georgia, El Salvador, Dubai, and adopt libertarian, free market, property rights-based values. And not, those three countries are not perfect examples of those things. Don't nitpick this. And then maybe, and then you can move that country. That could take, but that could take decades or hundreds of years. You could be dead by then. You know, you'll suffer the collapse before then. This is not a solution. That's why I didn't want to talk about this. I like to talk about solutions instead of esoteric models. But there you go. That's why libertarianism is far less bad than being a left winger or being a right winger, particularly a modern day right winger, which leans towards authoritarianism. Cool, cool. All right. Your questions. I'm going to scroll here to the top. Look at all the questions. <clears throat> Let's see here. Some of you are just making comments. I'm only going to res respond to... Uh, in the mid-2010s, I personally seen libertarians become Trump drones and moderate liberals go woke. People have lost their minds. Uh, correct. So Alex Jones, people don't remember this, was a libertarian. Vox Day, those of you know who he is, was, used to be a libertarian. <laughs> Stephen Molyneux used to be a libertarian. Now these guys are all big government Trump nationalists. Nationalism is big government. Correct. Let's see here. I'm a bit confused as to why you supported Ross Perot. I don't really see him as a libertarian, and he supported policies such as raising taxes of the rich and stricter gun laws. Correct. I have never said that Ross Perot was a libertarian or even close. What I said was Ross Perot could have saved the U.S. from collapse back in the early 90s. I did never said Ross Perot was a libertarian. And back in the early 90s, I was not a hardcore libertarian. I was more of a half conservative, half libertarian. I didn't figure that out until later in the 90s. So that's why. You're correct. What's the difference between libertarianism and Ayn Rand objectivism? Um, a subset of Ayn Rand objectivism is anarcho-capitalist, no government. It's a subset. So uh, objectivism is four or five different things. There's a philosophy, finance, and two other things I forget. And one of the little legs is anarcho-capitalism. So there's no difference. It's just a subset. Um, let's see here. Do you think Ron Paul running as a Republican instead of a libertarian played a small role in helping the Trump right co-op to turn libertarian is libertarian? Uh, no, I don't. Cause that was way before then. That was 2010. It was way back in the day. I mean, maybe some, but here's the thing. Bill Maher used to call himself a libertarian in the nineties. He's a left winger who wants free government health care for everybody. And the only reason he said it is he wanted weed legalized. So people have misused that term for a long time. So no, I don't think so, because what we're, what we're describing was 2016, 17, not 2010. Maybe. Don't know. Caleb, if you concentrate money and sex, the top five to 10 kick-ass entrepreneurs with libertarian policies and the rest of society will eventually either become socialists or fascists. They're already there. The vast majority of society is already a socialist or a fascist, especially Gen Z and millennial generations, including right-wingers. I just talked about that earlier. Did you see that poll where Gen Z sort of likes the idea of cameras being in their houses? Yes. Yes. And this is the future of you Americans. Get the fuck out of the United States. Why are you still there? You know what's coming. Why are you there? Why are you not working on leaving? If you're there, I understand. You should be working on actively leaving if you're in the United States, Canada, anywhere in Western Europe, and in most parts of Eastern Europe. And if you're not working on it, why? We don't like governments, but they are necessary. 
Correct. If you're a minarchist, libertarian like me, correct. The biggest reason why China collapsed was because of opium addiction. The reason they were able to kick it was because of harsh, authorit harsh authoritarianism. No. <laughs> authoritarianism is not the answer. We can talk about that individual scenario if you like. You don't say, well, authoritarianism helped this one problem, so authoritarianism is the way to go. No, it's not. No, it is not. Incorrect. If Yes, you need go small, tiny governments. That's not authoritarianism. No, that is the opposite of libertarianism. And your argument is kind of typical. Well, we need libertarian, no, excuse me. We need authoritarianism. It gets shit done. No. Who do you think is the least bad libertarian running for president? There are none. I mean, there's a libertarian party, but it gets less than one, it's 1% of the vote. Here's how you know America's fucked. In 2016, we had the two worst people in the United States run for president. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, two of the most unlikable people you could find in a population of 350 million people. These are the best people you could find out of the pot of 350 million. Okay, the Libertarian Party or third parties in general should have got at least 15% of the vote that year. That was the year they should have got at least that because everyone hated both those people. They got one and a half percent. America's fucked. Who was the worst president in your lifetime? Probably George W. Bush. When the USA collapses, where will government officials and American elites go? It depends. It depends on the nature of the collapse. Because they're one of four or five different scenarios. We don't know what scenario it'll be. So it depends. Them fucking off their private islands forever. Some of them will go to, yeah, uh, Jim Cameron will go to New Zealand. They all have escape routes. All these, all these billionaires have escape routes. Oh, yeah, they all. They all know exactly where they'll go. Then what? Because it's going to happen. It depends on how America collapses. It can be one of five different scenarios. It depends. Some of them will stay and become little kings. Some of them will get the fuck out. It depends on how it collapses. You say a government's job is to protect its own people from force. Correct. But nowadays, countries are good at attacking indirectly without obvious force. Russian propaganda, interference in U.S. elections. That's force. That is use of force. That is an act of war. That's use of force. That's not not force. That is force. It's not bombing a country. It's still force. You know what China did during the pandemic? I've talked about this. This is another use of force. When the pandemic broke out in China, so the Chinese are smart. They're evil. The government's evil, but they're smart. Here's what they did. They saw all these cities in their country getting the disease. Huh? So they shut down all flights to all the other cities in their country to not spread the disease. But the flights that were going to London, Los Angeles, New York, they said, sure, go ahead, no problem. Send all the flights to those cities. They spread that shit on purpose. That is an act of aggression. Now, the response is a different story. What do we do in response? Different issue. I'm saying that's use of force. What are some least bad libertarian news sources? Reason Magazine. Just go, do a Google search on that. Did you see Kurzweil's recent interview with Joe Rogan? He was stagnant and exhibiting cognitive decline. He takes lots of anti-aging pills. Yeah, he was awful. I like Ray Kurzweil. I like his content, but he was awful. He, he should have been on that podcast. Now, anything that anyone says, Ray Kurzweil says, people go, oh, him? He's disgusting. That was very bad. He is very similar to um, Deepak Chopra. Those of you who are my age, you remember him from the 90s? How to age gracefully and be aged like shit. Yeah. How should the U.S. government have reacted to the civil rights movement of the 1960s? So here's how this works. Let me talk. That's a good question. Here's exactly the work in a libertarian society, okay? I'm going to reverse the races to not get in trouble here on YouTube, all right? Or wherever I, wherever you're hearing my voice, because it's a podcast. If, you're, if you start a business in your downtown city in the United States, okay? You start a shoe shine business, you start a restaurant, doesn't matter. <clears throat> and you put up a sign that says, we only serve black people here. If you're white, Hispanic, Asian, you are not allowed here. We only serve black people, and it's a black-owned business. Should black people be allowed to do that? Now, most of you are saying, hell no. The government should come in and tell them how to run their business. No. Who are they aggressing against? Nobody. Is it their property? Yes, it's their property. They can do whatever the fuck they want. 
Now, here's what happens. What do you think in today's era would happen to that business? They'd be out of business within a few months. Same thing you had a white business. Like we only serve whites. Okay. That business would go out of business within a few months. Wouldn't it? It'd be in big trouble financially. Now, here is the problem. For a few months, you have to walk by and see that sign. You get mad. Tough tits. The government is not here to make you feel good and, and manage your touchy-feely emotions. The government is here to what? Protect you from force. This goes back to bake a cake for gay couples. If you're a business owner, you should be allowed to service anyone you want. And I'll, my son is black. You want to call me racist? Have fun with that. My son is black. <laughs> so, no. So, now there are some aspects of civil rights that made sense. The civil rights movement was a lot of different laws. You have to be specific which law you're talking about. You should be allowed to service any type of customer you want in your business. And the free market will fucking take you out if you act like an asshole. That's how the free market works. The problem is the free market doesn't work fast enough for people's touchy-feely feelings. So they want the government to come in and immediately put them out of business so they don't have to walk by those signs. Sorry, that's not the role of government. Do you, cover, do you consider inflation as a form of tax? If it is because of money printing by the government, that is exactly what it is. It is a tax. If it is because a normal fluctuation in the free market system, then no, because the government's not taxing you. It's not the government doing it. So it depends on where the inflation is coming from. Right-wingers are fans of red flag laws. I don't know what that means. So you say you should not use force to stop people from killing themselves by using drugs. Correct. You Those people own their own bodies. If they're adults. If they're, if they're children, no. If they're adults, yes. You have every right to kill yourself using drugs. It's your body, your choice. Just like the left-wingers say with abortion. Now, the abortion gets a little more hairy. But it's your body, if you're not pregnant, it's your body, your choice. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That is correct. Do you want to pay cops? You want to pay, do you want, here's the, here's the way you need to view this. Do you want government to come to your house, pull a shotgun, put it to your head, say, give me money to pay cops to make sure no one kills themselves with drugs? Is that what you want? Because that's how it works. Now, sometimes they say that, left will say, that's not how it works to pay taxes. You don't pay taxes at the point of a gun. Wrong. You pay taxes at the point of a gun. If you don't believe me, stop paying all of your taxes. Wait a while and watch what happens. Now, government is fundamentally incompetent, so it might be a few years before this happens, but this will eventually happen. Men with guns will come to your house. Taxes are collected by force unless it's sales tax, which is why that's the only tax I like. Not the only tax. There's a few taxes I'm, I'm cool with. I'm cool with the head tax. I'm cool with the sales tax. I'm cool with tariffs if you're careful. I'm not cool with any form of income tax or corporate tax. That's stealing. You're coming into my home. You're putting a shotgun in my head. And you're ripping money out of my wallet without my permission. That's use of force. You cannot do that in a free society. You, that is immoral and evil. It wouldn't make much sense to be moved to a low tax country if your money buys you less goods. <clears throat> right. So make money from a high from a high in, from a high tax country, a Western country, and move to Paraguay. Sweet spot. Has there been a society where all drugs were legal? It seems like that could destroy society. The Netherlands, um, someone needs to fact check me on this. Are are any drugs illegal in the Netherlands? In terms of, you know the normal heroin type stuff. I think the Netherlands. Now, let me answer that real quick. You're not going to like this. Society has the right to destroy itself if it wants to. That's up to society. That's society's choice. It's not your choice. If society is that bad to say, we're all going to do drugs and we're all going to get, 100% of us are going to get to the heroin. That'll never happen. That'll not, you're not going to have a society of if America made all drugs legal tomorrow, it would not destroy America. Some people will do them. Most people who are doing drugs are the ones already doing them. I wouldn't start doing drugs. Would you start doing drugs? Because I don't do drugs. So that's not going to happen. But if it did, that's their decision. That's their choice. This goes back to the draft. When right-wingers say, well, for countries invaded, we need to draft people, which is what happened in Ukraine. If our country's invaded, the government has to force young men to go into the army to defend us. No. 
those young men and other men should defend themselves and and get together and form militias. But what if they don't do that, Caleb? Then they don't deserve to stay around. They're making that decision. If you're not going to fight for your freedom, fight for your home, fight for your family, that's your choice. You're going to get taken out, bro. Government's not going to put, shouldn't put a gun to your head and make you serve in the army. I can tell you horror stories of young men I know in the Ukrainian army right now. Because I know a lot of Ukrainians here in Dubai. It's awful. No, no. <laughs> That's aggression. I agree, but for rich people, that wouldn't be a problem. I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> Funny, like Americans only say Democrat red seas are terrible like New York City. They just don't seem to wake up. Most Americans are left-wingers. That includes most Trump supporters. Mm -hmm. So you say you should... Oh, you already answered that. I already answered that one. <clears throat> so you say you should not use force to stop people and kill so you should drop. Correct. Even if, if that's someone in your family or close. I can go to someone in my family individually and say, hey, stop this. What are you doing? I love you. That's not the government. Correct. The government should not do with if my sister does drugs. That's my business and her business. That's my family and her friends. Not the God. You want Biden in charge of that? You want Trump in charge of that? I don't. Did you saw what happened in Vancouver? CA streets look like BCS of that. I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> yeah, I'm against, I don't do drugs. I don't do drugs in my life. But I'm not going to pay the government to make sure you don't snort cocaine. I don't care if you snort cocaine. Go ahead. That's your body. I can't tell you what to do with your body. And by the way, if I went to my sister, let's say my hypothetical sister was on drugs. I don't have that. Let's say she was. Stop doing this. I love you. You're going to die. And she says, fuck you. I'm going to do whatever drugs I want. If I die, I die. That's her choice. I talk about that when I talk about leaving your country. And people say, what if you can't leave your family? What if they want to stay? And they say, fuck you. That's their decision as adults. It's called freedom. Assuming the U.S. balkanizes, which states do you think will do well? We don't know. There's no way to know that. My money on Texas, Florida, maybe California. I, that, my money aren't on any of those. You don't know. My money would be on tiny rural states like South Dakota. That'd be about, but I don't know that either. There's no way to know that. For the 90 business builder, will you do the 14-day trial again? It was it a one-time deal. I don't know yet. I will know next week. I'll let you know next week if it's a one-time deal. Probably a one-time deal, but I don't know yet. I took a personality test and it came out to be ISTP. Is this a bad thing? There's no such thing as a bad personality type. No. I work as a contractor and I have 14 months left on the contract. I don't want to work another job as it sucks. Is this enough time to start a business and make about 5K a month? 5K a month would be very aggressive, 14 months. 2K, 3K. You could do 5K if you hit it really hard. Do you have any disagreements with objectivism? Only the ones about um, their religious beliefs. They're, they're hardcore atheists. I've already done a, an entire podcast on my spiritual views. Watch that podcast. Let's do it. The U.S. is awesome. No, and not anymore. Well, it was. Constitution carry is permit less carry, meaning you don't need a permit to conceal a gun. Why did 29 states pass constitutional carry laws? Louisville and South Carolina became recent states. Could you clarify why government is needed for roads, course, and courts and protection against force instead of everything being handled by corporations and then no government would be needed for everything? You need to explain. It's up to you asking that question to explain how that would work. So you need to explain to me exactly how a major city with three, four million people in it with all these roads and roads out in the country are all privately owned and how that would work. Now, I have some ideas how it would work. You have a little chip in your car. That's how Dubai works. You have a little chip in your car. And if you hit a certain road, it bills, it, you, it bills you. It goes on a bill somewhere. So I have ways of how it would work. But literally, you, you have to explain it. It could, roads alone could work. There are other things that would be complicated. I mean, again, I'm for it in my heart. In my heart, I'm for corporations and small business running everything. I'm for that. You show me a model where that will work. I haven't seen it. I'm well, no, I'm not for that because people would start government skin. So again, my objection is not it wouldn't work. My objection is people wouldn't do it. 
People would never have a city or a world where there's no government. People like governments. And they like government now in the Western world more than they've ever loved it. And it's going to get worse every year, and this includes Trump supporters. Why even have political beliefs at all? It's not like you can make a country like this and having these opinions doesn't help you in any way. Correct. That's why I didn't want to talk about this topic at all, but you guys wanted me to do it. Correct. I focus on solutions, not philosophy. My question on Kurzweil, was that actual cognitive decline or just a lack of familiar with the topics? It doesn't seem, it doesn't look good if that's aging science. I don't know. He's not very good in that. He's not a very good conversationalist. He never has been. He's not a good guy. He doesn't express himself well. It may not be aging decline. It could just be his personality. He's always been like that. He is worse, but he's always been pretty shitty. He's better at writing books. Read his books. Don't listen to him talk. <laughs> what do you think stopped the opium addiction pandemic in China? I didn't say that the government didn't stop it. I said, because you can find isolated cases, and I can name many, and you can name many, where authoritarian government solved a particular problem does not mean you embrace authoritarianism. That's insane. <clears throat> Netherlands ban hard drugs. No, that's not correct. You can do hard drugs in the Netherlands. You can sit there and shoot up heroin in Amsterdam. I'm talking about Amsterdam specifically. That's not correct. After America officially collapses, will prices on basic products become extremely expensive, such as a loaf of bread consisting of $500? That depends on if it's an inflationary collapse or a deflationary collapse. We don't know which one will happen. So it could, but we don't know. I once spoke with a landlord, and he said that the reason he does not accept affordable housing is so he won't have to deal with black people. And not relevant to any of my points. Yes, there are some people who are racist. But again, the word racist doesn't mean anything anymore. The personal possession, you guys, you guys talk about uh, Portugal, okay. Is it aggression if someone uses drugs and then drives their car around or only becomes aggression if they end up hurting someone else? Only if they end up hurting someone else. So in a libertarian society, there's no drunk driving. There, there's no dr breathalyzer test or that stuff. You get as drunk as you want, high as you want, get in a car and drive around. Now, what I would do if I ran a libertarian city Here's what I would do. Do whatever you want. But if you hurt someone in your car, you've committed a crime, number one. Then we're gonna then we'll test you once you've actually hurt somebody. Then if you're drunk, whatever penalty gets multiplied 5x. But we're not gonna test you other than that. So if a cop pulls you over, he can't say, hey, you need a breathalyzer test. No, go on your way. You hurt someone, you're in big fucking trouble. Again, under a libertarian model, you throw someone in jail or find someone after they commit a crime, not before they commit a crime. Because if you do it before they commit a crime, then you have to punish everybody. I, I spent most of my adult life in the state of Oregon where there's huge fines if you didn't wear a seatbelt. Fuck you. That's punishing you and you haven't done anything wrong before you've done it. That's your decision. Now, you can make an argument about not putting a seatbelt on your baby in the back seat. That's different. But if you're alone in a car and you want don't want to wear your seatbelt, for a cop to say you're now three five hundred dollar fine because you wear your seatbelt, fuck you. How do you feel about public intoxication laws enforced in public places? Example: homeless fentanyl junkies strung out laying on the sidewalk. So government, as I talk about, is small, local, and decentralized. So. Local governments can do whatever they want. So if the, if the United States, for example, is a libertarian society, a uh, man can only dream, it'll never happen. The federal government would be very tiny. I talked about this in my blogs. The federal government would be microscopic. It'd be there, but it'd be very small. There would be no states. What? Yes. There'd be no states and no counties, just cities and towns. So each individual city can say, in this city, you can walk around drunk all you want. In this city, you can get fucked up on fentanyl and walk around like a maniac. In a right-wing city, you say, uh, no, we do not allow public drunkenness. You will be fined if, in this city. And if you, Now, every city has their own set of laws, and then you move to whichever city you like, and then everybody's happy. That's how it works. What you don't want is a state or a federal government saying, 
No one in the entire land, this massive country can do this. Fuck you. Again, what did I say early on? Atlanta can control Atlanta. Atlanta has no right to tell Seattle what to do and vice versa. None in a free society, which none of you want. <laughs> you think the U.S. government got too big after the Civil War, after World War I? Both. So America was truly libertarian-ish pre-Civil War. After the Civil War, thanks to Abraham Lincoln, a lot of that libertarian uh, models broke down. Then uh, the next problem was not World War I, it was 1913, where they passed the first income tax, stupid, and direct election of senators. 1913 was the beginning of the end of the United States. It wasn't the end. The United States exploded over time, but that's when the progressives and the left-wingers, the authoritarians got control. <clears throat> I know ideally those would be private spaces. Okay, I already answered that. My fear of starting an online location of pen and business is there's so many business gurus out there. There is so much competition now. Everyone wants to be an online business owner. Then don't go into competition against them. We don't teach that in Business Builder. Find a narrow, 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 narrow niche and help just that niche. You don't go on Facebook and say, I'm going to help you start a business, anybody. That's stupid. Don't do that. I would never do that. How would a libertarian society respond to a pandemic with a 10% or higher death rate? So, good question. So we had a pandemic with a 1% death rate. The government had no right to make you wear a mask or to stay home or to social distance. That's insane with a 1%. Now, if it was 30%, now you're aggressive, right? If it's a 30% death rate, right? Like the Spanish flu was 30%, right? That's different. If there's a pandemic going around with a 30% death rate, and you go outside and you cough on me, you are aggressing, 30%. 1%? No. 30%? Yeah. Especially 30% all ages? Yes. So then you can enact laws to prevent those things. It'd be a mess for a while. You could. Because again, you're aggressing. 10% is a gray area, and there needs to be some kind of consensus on when does the government get involved and when does it. 10%, I can't respond to that because it would be depend on whom. 10% of old people, 10% of only little kids, 10% of everyone across the board. That's where it gets hazy. But if it's really bad, like 30%, yes, the government has every right to make you stay home. And yes, yes. And again, if you're smart, you hit per city. So certain cities say, no lockdowns, everyone can cough on everybody. And other cities say, oh my God, they're like China, you're going to stay home, you'll, you'll be arrested if you leave your house. And every city does whatever they want. And then when the pandemic's over, you can make a decision on where you want to live, which is what I did during the pandemic. I left. I didn't sit there and go, God damn it, I don't want a vaccine. And you got it anyway. All you fucking right-wing Trump supporters who hated the vaccine, but you got it anyway because you're a bunch of pussies. I never got the vaccine. I left and went to Dubai where they don't mandate it. Reason number 47, America's collapsing. No one's doing anything about it. <laughs> you just bitch and moan. You mentioned left-wing wanting marijuana highly regulated. Correct. Should government be involved in some degree of drug and medicine regulation to make sure they're safe to take? No, there should be no FDA. What? Yes, there should be no FDA at all. You should be able to take anything you want. Well, Kayla, what if they make a drug that kills people? In the internet era, you would know in 10 seconds. If I, if there was a company that developed a new drug that solved this particular problem, Ozempic or whatever, right? And it fucking killed like 10% of people who took it. Within 48 hours, it hit the market. You'd know, and then people would stop taking it. It's the internet era. Now, 30, you know, not 30. 200 years ago, you maybe you could make an argument. Today, with the internet? No. I didn't mention that before. The internet, the fact that we have internet, even people in Africa are on the internet, preempts a lot of these needed laws. You should not have any FDA. You should be allowed to invent anything you want, put it on the market. If you kill people, it's going to go off the market fast, and you're going to get fucking sued into oblivion. Kurt, by the way, the number of people who would have died in that first 24, 40 hours would pale in comparison to the number of people the United States FDA has killed because they delayed life-saving drugs for people who are dying of cancer. Go do some research on this. It's horrific. The FDA has killed millions of people because we have a fucking FDA. You should be able, If you're dying, you should be able to take any fucking drug you want to save yourself. That's your. It's your body. Current U.S. economic policy is based on Milton Friedman. No, it's not. No, it's not. I wish it was. Don't no, stop. Is he a libertarian? Yes or no? 
I'm going to say yes. You might be able to find one or two areas where he wasn't. I'm going to say yes. That's why current economic policy is not based on Milton Friedman at all. Are you kidding? No, I wish it was. Chat GPT. Hard drugs and Amsterdam are illegal. What? I need Then I need a definition for hard drugs, Chat GPT. However, there are specialized facilities where individuals can use it under medical supervision as part of a harm reduction programs. Okay. And there you go. That might be right. Sure. We have whatever tax rates, but elites pay between 1% and 5% anyways because they do five flags and they're corporate entities. Correct. Isn't Apple based in Ireland? I, I don't think they're based on but you're right. That's correct. Regarding gun ownership, should there be no background check? Correct. There should be no background check. You do not hurt anyone by purchasing a gun. And guns should be sold to those who have a history of violence, robbery, etc. So a few things you can do that. One is you can become criminally liable if you sell someone a gun and they use it in a crime. That'd be okay because you aggressed. You are contributing to an aggression. So if a guy who's murdered 10 people and you sell him a bunch of Uzis <laughs> and he goes and murders another 10 people, then yes, you could be held liable for that. That'd be fine because you aggressed. You were part of the aggression. Is it a gray area? A little bit, but that's okay because I wouldn't do that if I was selling guns. Here's the other thing, the free market. If you owned a gun store in a free market libertarian society, would you just sell guns to any idiot who walks off the street? No, you would have free market processes in place, background checks, then you could look up, you'd have your own set of requirements because you didn't want to be held liable, right? Libertarianism does not mean the Wild West. It doesn't because people don't want to get sued. People don't want to get in trouble. People don't want to get shamed on the internet, right? People self-regulate, not 100%. That's why Dave Rubin is stupid. It's not 100%. But there are, there are costs to doing things in a stupid manner in a free market society, which the United States does not have. <clears throat> How many students do you have succeeding with online location independent business? Are there predictable risks? Are you talking about from my brand since day one, since 2020? Hundreds. Are there predictable risks? risks. Well, I teach a model that doesn't cost you any money to start a business. So you're not risking any money. You could risk some time, but then you pivot. There's only risks if I say spend $30,000 to start. Well, then you're risking $30,000, but I don't do that. This company you're looking at right here is a seven-figure company. I started for $29. So what do I risk? I risk 29 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hang on a second. I'm going to go back up to my notes. Because one of you reminded me of some. Oh, hang on. Let me talk about regulation for a minute. Dave Rubin, who is a liar. I know I don't use that term often, but he is. He doesn't believe what he says. There's a lot of right-wingers who don't believe what they say. Dave Rubin, Candace Owens. And there's a whole bunch of horrible people on the left, too. Yes, yes, yes. And there are true believers like Ben Shapiro who are okay on the right. Dave Rubin did a somewhat famous clip on the Joe Rogan podcast where Dave Rubin said, you don't need, he was pretending to be a libertarian. He's not. He said, you don't need government to regulate anything. You should just let people do whatever they want. And Joe Rogan said, wait a minute, I come out of construction and there are guys who build houses. And if there was no regulation on houses, they would build houses that would burn down just to make a buck. So that's just bullshit. That's not correct. And Dave Rubin said, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they talked about, you know, I, I got shipped. I got shipped some eggs, some, some what chicken eggs or whatever he said. I forget. He was so stupid. And they came and they they arrived perfectly. There was no problem. And Joe Rogan said, "Yeah, U.S. Post Office." He's like, "Yeah, oops, okay." So, what's the deal on regulation? Here's how it works. Libertarian society means that there would be no regulation on people building homes. But Caleb, then a bunch of people. Wait a second. <clears throat> if you're a builder and you build a bunch of homes and a whole bunch of people die and burn or the homes collapse and kill a bunch of people, A, it's the internet. People would find out in 10 seconds. B, you'd be sued into oblivion. You would never be able to do work ever again. You could even wind up on criminal charges and go to prison. So 
what would happen is the real estate industry would have its own set of internal non-governmental regulations and they would get certified. So what you could do is if you're a realtor, you would say, you should buy this house. <clears throat> it's been certified by the da -da 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 association, which means they've gone through the entire house and inspected it when it was being built and it's been built to these standards and it's a third party association. It's also been approved by this association who also checked it. Or you could go to the, you could go to another realtor and the realtor would say, buy this house. You'd say, has it been approved by any of these um, these uh, uh, verification agencies? Nope. And now you make the decision on what kind of house you buy. Whenever you have a power supply, like in a desktop computer or a big engine or something like that, the thing that creates the power, there's a little symbol on it that says UL. That's called Underwriters Laboratories. What is that? That is an independent, non-governmental company that certifies power supplies. If there's a UL rating on it, that means it's not going to explode and burn down. So you would only buy something that has a UL rating on it. It's free market self-regulation. Now, does that work perfectly all the time? No. What did I say at the very beginning of this? There's no perfect solutions. There are some problems with libertarianism, but on the overall, it's much less bad than being a right-winger or a left-winger. So, so a libertarian free society with tiny government and no regulations does not mean there's no regulations. A lot of industries would self-regulate, and some wouldn't. And then you make the decision as the consumer what to purchase and what not to purchase. In a libertarian society, I would not buy a house or live in an apartment building that was not certified by any third party. I wouldn't do it because I don't want it falling on my head. And builders who try to do that would get either wiped out of the market or get sued into oblivion over time, not immediately, like with the we only serve black people here. There'd be a time where people would get away with it and then people would adjust. Harry Brown said this, the only reason people invented governments is because they're impatient about how slowly sometimes the free market works. The free market always works. Sometimes it works a little too slowly for people and they don't like it. So to speed it up, they invented something called governments to regulate and be authoritarian. Right. Do you really know Doug Casey? Uh, I have talked to him several times in person. I don't know if you would say I know him. What is he like in person? Very friendly. Very nice. Uh, nicer than I expected. He's a lot nicer now that he's older. As I've talked about it over my other brand, men mellow out when they get older. <laughs> Unless they're in TRT like me. So they just get more relaxed. You know, when I was reading his articles, you know, like 25 years ago, he was much more aggressive and, but just an aging thing. So, all right. I can do a few more questions and then I'm going to take off. Um... Did I do all of my announcements? Yes, calebjones.com slash events, especially for the Paraguay event. You've got about eight, nine days left to sign up for that if you want residency in Paraguay. If you want to come join us in Paraguay, we have a Get to Know Paraguay uh, event and two different masterminds you can come to. You just want to hang out with us. We have a bunch of other events and the deadlines are coming up for those soon, but the one that's coming up fastest is Paraguay because we need your documents before you, you know, before you do the thing. Okay, hang on one second here. Why am I getting an error on my screen? Cool. All right. One more drink. Uh, I'll do a few more questions if you have them, and then I'm out of here. Don't expect me to do future live streams or podcasts on purely political or philosophical topics like this because these don't help you. This is a listing topic, which is why I don't I avoid them. I'm here to give you real world techniques and push you guys into action. There's too many of you who are listings who are really smart guys sitting around thinking about shit all day. As the world collapses around, you don't take any action. My job is to push you to take action, to build your own location independent business, quit your stupid nine to five job, or with some of you, your stupid location dependent business was sometimes even worse than jobs. And then look at international options if you want to do them. Libertarianism ain't going to save you. <laughs> I tried the 90s. I was very active politically in the 90s to spread the word about libertarianism. And here's what I found. 
Everyone agrees with you until there's an election. So when I debate left-wingers or right-wingers in my personal life, we talk about these topics, 95% of the time, the left-wingers and the right-wingers say, yeah, you're right, that is better. Yeah, that is a good point. But then when it's Trump v. Biden, they throw all that in the trash and they excitedly vote for Trump or Biden because the other guy is worse. It's called lesser evilism. Voting for the lesser of two evils, that means shock when the result is evil, you dumb shits. And then when the high of the election comes off, they go right back to agreeing about, yes, libertarians are right. <laughs> Everyone's a libertarian until there's an election. And then suddenly they're right or left, both of which have responsible for destroying your society. If the United States, Canada, or the countries in Western Europe were libertarian or very close to libertarian, you would not be experiencing literally any of the problems you are now having, including things like your declining birth rates. What? Yes. Because you made it too expensive to have kids because of your big governments. None of these problems would be problems, including things like fentanyl, because not you wouldn't have all these people depressed. You'd have drug use. I'm not saying you'd have zero crime and zero drug use, but the major problems you guys bitch and complain, all the third world is crossing the border. Why are they crossing the border? Because they want free money from what? Your government. Let me cover that really quick. I didn't mention this. How would you handle the border? I've written entire articles about this. Okay, well, how would you handle the border then? The libertarian. Mm. In a libertarian society, it is an open border, completely open border, defended by the military. Huh? Yes. So if you're just walking across the border, we let you walk across the border. We don't care. Why? Why don't we care? Because, A, there's no welfare state. It's like Dubai. We don't give you one penny of anything free. So you come across the border, you work. And if you don't work, you starve or you leave our country, which is exactly how Dubai works. You come to Dubai and say, I want free shit. <laughs> they laugh at you. Get to work, pay your own bills, or starve or go back home. That's the appropriate response. Number two, you would not be bombing other countries. So you wouldn't have a terrorism problem, which the United States and you know UK has. You wouldn't have that problem because no one would hate you because you wouldn't have 800 military bases in other people's countries. So they're not terrorists, and they only, only build cross that border people who come to work. Perfect. Come on over. Now, I said not. it's an open border defended by the military. You can't drive a tank across the border? No. Then we blow up your tank. You can't fly fighter jets across our border? Then we blow you up your fi fucking fighter jets. So it's an open border, strongly defended by your military. That's how you should have it. So if you were libertarian, if your country libertarian... You Europeans wouldn't have all these Africans and, you know, Muslims. You wouldn't have all these people. If you, United States, you people in the United States and Canada, you wouldn't have all these South Americans, Central Americans. Met. You wouldn't have them. The only people coming to your countries were people who were friendly and there to work, which is the way it used to work in the United States prior to 1968. The only people who came to the United States the came to work. That's who you want. That's why Dubai is exploding. That's why the economy is so great here. The only people coming to Dubai are people like me coming to work. We come here to work. <laughs> the people coming to your countries are people who have their hands that want free shit because you have a welfare state which you left-wingers want and you right-wingers also kind of want. It's your fault. As I keep saying, you guys, this is all your fault. All right, a few more questions. I gotta go. Um, going off your response, not needing the FDA. What about drugs that give you cancer or kill you in 10 years? Same exact thing. Same exact thing. It would cure your cancer and then you would die in 10 years, and a whole bunch of people would die in 10 years. And that would suck. And people go, oh shit. Obviously, they would work in 10 years. Now, here's the other thing: people have a choice. Maybe, maybe extend your life 10 years. Instead of dying from cancer tomorrow, you die in 10 years. Let people have that choice. It's up to them. It's not up to you how people do what people do with their own bodies. Why is that your business? Fuck off. You're being a nosy, not a nosy. Well, you're being a busybody, sticking your nose in other people's business. If people want to take a dangerous drug, that's their decision. What if it's my sister? Then go talk to her. And if she's an adult, she can say, fuck you, or she can say, oh, good point. And that's her decision. Why do you want to run other people's lives? Why are you trying to find all these scenarios to run other people's lives? You are typical. 
Most people are like you. Well, what if this? We have to tell people because what if this? No, you don't. Let people do what they want. And freedom is a little messy sometimes. Sometimes people do things you don't like. If you're a right winger, sometimes people have premarital sex or, or they're gay or they go trans or they, you know, they do things you don't like or they gamble a lot. Or they do a lot of drugs. Okay. If you're a left winger, sometimes people make a lot of money and don't donate any to charity. And they buy these big mansions and they roll around on big piles of cocaine and cash. And they say, I'm so rich. Ha ha ha. It's called freedom. Let them do what they want. Freedom requires responsibility. As Harry Brown once said, freedom is responsibility. It is literally the same thing. You should Google that. Harry Brown, freedom is responsibility. He wrote a whole article about it. It's genius. Freedom is responsibility. Now, people don't want to be responsible, so you don't have no freedom today. Thanks for this topic. You're very well. You're very welcome. What if we generally like our job and make good money? You will never be free. As I say, if you don't care about freedom, go ahead. You'll never be free. That's both Alpha Male 2.0 and Unchained Sea. If you love your job, you have a boss, you're reliant on your job, Relying on your company, relying on your boss, relying on your industry. You'll never be free. Now, if you say, I don't care, Caleb, then do it every month. I don't know why you're listening to my stuff. Open borders don't work. That's not what I said. Did I say open border? What did I say? I said open border, strongly defended by the military. Let me see what else said. Because the immigrants get citizenship and vote themselves gibbs. It's the same as a traditional military invasion, just lower. In a libertarian society, you wouldn't be able to do that. You couldn't vote for free shit in a libertarian society. It's not how it works. Small, local, and decentralized. You're thinking like an American, where democracy is awesome. Let's all vote for what the federal government does. It's not how it works. Not how it works. Plus, they wouldn't be allowed to vote. I've said this many times. I'm always shocked when people don't know this, because you guys went to public schools and private schools. They don't teach this. When the United States was founded, for many, many years, the United States, most white men could not vote. What? Yeah. So you just heard about women not being able to vote and black people not being able to vote. Uh, most white men could not vote because they knew if we let everyone voting, we're going to have a socialist country. So they only made sure that only certain people could vote. Which if, you, if you're going to do democracy, I'm against democracy. But if you're going to do it, that's the way to do it. Would you let some random person walk in who's not a citizen and vote in a libertarian society with a small local dissension? No. So what you're worried about is never going to happen. <clears throat> it's those obsolete dramatic people that always tell you what to do, what to do. You can say what you want or keep your mouth closed about plans, et cetera. Would you run for libertarian president? No. Why would I do something that stupid? Absolutely not. If you had a, had a chance of winning, I would never want to be a president of the United States. Plus I'd be killed. I'd be in office for, Probably a week and I'd be assassinated. <laughs> you can read the article I did about what I would do if I, I did an entire article, what I would do if I was president. I was I did three or four pages of very specific things that the president could actually do. Most people don't know what president means. I go into detail, like 17 things I would do. Like the first thing is I would recall 100% of all troops all around the world back to the US except for South Korea. And in South Korea, I'd give them three years. And then they're out. As soon as I did that, I'd be taken out. That, and that's item number one out of 17 things I would do. <laughs> It'd be JFK 2.0. Not even that. JFK was around for a few years. I wouldn't last a week. If I actually became president, oh my God. <laughs> I would flood the Federal Reserve of subpoenas right there. I'm out. I'm out. What the hell this guy? No. I would veto every bill Congress sent me. I would, I say in the article, I would take the Constitution, copy of it, attach it to the desk in the Oval Office, and encase it in glass with permanently attached. And then every time I got a bill from Congress, I would say, okay, is this allowed under Article 2, Section 8 of the Constitution, which shows, says what government is allowed to do? No, no, okay, veto. I'd veto 100% of bills. I'll, I'd be gone. <laughs> I'm not for big government. Every president has to be big government, including Trump. You Trump morons. Every government is for huge government. Excuse me. Every president's for huge government. And in Canada, and in the UK, and in France, and in Germany, 
in Australia. That's what you people like. So, plus, even if that was there, I still want to be president. I'd be terrible life. Plus, I would only make 400000 a year. Excuse me. I'll, I'll still get one more. All right. Um, I'm going to go here. Okay. Do you have a few more questions? Is Spain a good place to run a location of independent business? There are much better places in the in the world besides Spain. I, not my first choice. Illegal immigrants can impact elections even without voting because they are counted in the census and the census determines how representatives are apportioned. Again, in a libertarian society, that's not how it would work. Small, local, and decentralized. You'd have individual towns with lots of immigrants if they allowed them in those towns. And the census, there wouldn't be a federal census. Why is there a federal census? Who gives a fuck? Stupid. Libertarianism only works in a society of a decent amount of people actually believe in freedom. Right? That's why we don't have any. Right. If this was decades ago, it could work. Today, everyone hates freedom. Correct. Good place to end this. People hate freedom. As I said a while ago in this, in this podcast, do not expect anyone to embrace these models. Everybody hates real libertarians. That's why they only get 1% of the vote. People hate freedom. They hate it. They can't stand it, including right-wingers, Trump supporters, anti-woke people. They can't stand freedom. <clears throat> they absolutely do not want this. If you are a true libertarian, minarchist libertarian like me, or an ANCAP like my buddies, you are a very tiny, tiny segment of the population, which means instead of focusing on voting for people, stupid, what should you do? Step one. Get a location-independent business so you're not tied to a job. Step two, if you choose, internationalize your life by at least setting up an international backup plan so you have somewhere to go when your collapsing Western country collapses in your lifetime, which it will. Or if you want, move to another country like I did, but you don't have to. Don't rely on politics. This will not work. Rely on yourself and your inner circle, your spouse if you have one, and your small kids if you have them. That's it. Take care of that shit first. Once you're making plenty of money, you're location dependent, living a great life. If you still want to fart around with these esoteric political topics, fine. Then you're in a position of strength. But don't do that until then. Cool? Cool. All right. See you guys soon.